Today, we present to you a short history of Vladivostok. Come with us to the Pacific Ocean. On top of which gently flows the Sea of Japan. And from which arose, in prehistoric times, the then tropical continent of Vladivostok. In those jungle times, Vladivostok was partially covered by prehistoric poisonous rubber plants. Lovely streams flowed down the mountains to the sea. And the eye was highly entertained by primitive giant petunias. And also by ancient hot weather bananas, papayas, oranges, and turnips. In this primitive landscape, there roamed urcoyotes and proto raccoons and a species of myopic frog. But the greatest of them all was Hermenosaurus rex, who on a clear day liked to get up on top of a hill and extol to his fellow jungle dwellers the beauties of primitive life. How delectable are the intertwining discourses of brook and forest. How invigorating the diachronic signifiers disseminated by bird and beast. Each day starts a new outcropping of cold, and the air is heavy with the fragrance of metonymic lexias. How could this way of life ever become dull or taxing? Taxes. At this word, a chill fell upon the occasion. Snow began to fall. It crept forward in sheets, driving the jungle before it. Soon, it accumulated in huge drifts. Glaciers roared down the mountain sides. Until at last, Vladivostok was the Arctic landscape we know so well today. This austerity soon became inhabited. There were hunters, gatherers, Fishermen and malcontents. Fred the Hunter roamed the Arctic landscape in search of giant mice. Ted the Gatherer chased the wily mangle wurzel across the steppes. Ned the Fisherman rode out onto the frozen sea and cast his nets for Arctic snapper. Maurice the Malcontent sulked. Occasionally, an unusually large malcontent would arise and mouth off about the need for bigger and more plentiful mango wurzels. These, however, were soon put down by the czar. Thus, matters continued until the, the revolution. revolution. So, this is the Red Dawn, eh? Yeah, this is it. Reddest damn landscape I ever saw. Can't tell where anything is. It's all red. Yeah, we are being revolutionary now, all right. Sure is exciting. What a goddamn shame. I only brought black and white film. Eh. Meanwhile, in Vladivostok, life went on. Industrialization appeared with the advent of a pocket watch factory. Soon after, there was a grandfather clock factory, which was somewhat bigger and somewhat more efficient in producing black smoke. Then there came a nuclear-powered time enhancement apparatus production facility, which was yet more polluting, but which was very popular internationally. Fred went to hunt for Arctic mice in the watch factory. His endeavor was occasionally successful. Ted, the gatherer, chased the wily mangle wurzel through the grandfather clock factory, but he very seldom had any luck at all. Ned went to fish for scrod in the nuclear-powered time enhancement apparatus creation facility. That was a complete washout. 
Upon this depressing scene appeared <laughs> Gorbachev, promising peace, love, happiness, hamburgers, Coca-Cola, and free elections all around. With the help of specialists from abroad, the citizens were soon able to organize their first election campaign. Our industry cannot compete. Who is to blame for this defeat? My candidate will tell you who, recalcitrant peasants from Peru. This does not bear explaining. You lack the proper training. Don't break your puny little mind. Choose him because his wife looks kind. Don't break your puny little mind. Choose him, his wife looks kind. We promise you what's just and fair, schools, housing, health, and social care. Because all people should be free to purchase these things privately. Oh, this is most confusing. Your mind beware of losing. When you're inside that voting box, choose him, he wears the cleanest socks. When you're inside that voting box, remember this man's socks. My man has vision, scope, and range. He has the courage to bring change. And we assure you, he will do exactly like the other two. Your negative reaction points out his main attraction. It shows that you can trust this guy. He isn't smart enough to lie. Just go ahead and trust the guy. He's far too dumb to lie. The hot air released by this political oratory coats the atmosphere with a thin layer of oily contaminants. The fumes envelop Lithuania, creating a hothouse effect. Estonia, superheated, leaps into the air and lands on top of Latvia, which immediately becomes too hot to handle. Vladivostok does not escape its part in these atmospheric changes. The hot weather causes greenery to cascade down the mountain slopes. Soon, completely new species of plants appear. For instance, these poisonous rubber plants. Melting snow creates roaring mountain streams. Which soon begin to feed some state-of-the-art giant petunias. And nouveau tropical mangelwurzels. On this landscape, there soon appear neo-coyotes and ultra-raccoons. And, and an entirely new species of frog. But the greatest of them all was the giant Hermenosaurus rex who on a clear day would get up on top of a hill and lecture to his fellow jungle dwellers on the beauties of avant-garde life. How delectable are the intertwining discourses of brook and forest. How invigorating the diachronic signifiers disseminated by bird and beast. Each day starts with a new outcropping of codes, and the air is heavy with the sweetness of metonymic lexias. 